Hello everyone, my name is Trevor Wiskaisev. In this video, we are going to be highlighting the recommended workflow for some new users in Structural 3D. We won't be going over how to use every single feature in detail. We mainly just want to go over the general workflow that you uh, should be trying to adhere to. So we're going to be starting from a scratch project, but make sure to take advantage of the various import file functions as well as the template assemblies uh, where adequate. So to start, let's click on the Structural 3D icon. And let's, then let's click off the welcome message here. Here's where you'd be able to open a project, add an assembly, or upload a file. If you know the materials you're going to be using for your project, we recommend importing them at the beginning of the project so you can use them with your sections right away. To do this, we can go to materials on the left here, click on the database button, and then either searching with keywords or using the material library dropdown, select the material that you uh, want to use for your project. When ready, hit submit. Now you have that, that material in your project. Repeat this for the remaining materials you want inside your project. Now let's showcase how to import a section. So go to sections here on the left. We recommend either pulling directly from the database using the book button here, or heading into the integrated section builder to import the section. So for the first section, let's click on the book. Similar to before, you can either use the drop downs to select it, or we can type in uh, the section that we want. Once we find it, make sure we can choose the material for it and hit submit. Now that material with that section is, is imported here. Let's try it with the section builder now. So click on builder. Go to new section here. Type in another section you want to use. That section will populate here. Make sure to always select the material on this side. This material will always be associated with the section um, when you select it in here. So once that's complete, hit submit. Now we have two different sections in our project. So from here, we wanna be able to start and complete the modeling process. There are countless ways to do this, but the easiest, most popular way to start is by using the pen tool and then various operations to build the structure. If you wanna build your structure using spreadsheet values for the nodes and the members, feel free to copy and paste data from another spreadsheet and putting it into uh, the data here for the nodes and the members as well. To use the pen tool, go to the right side here, click on the pen, switch from the selection tool or the default tool to the pen tool. When using the pen tool, make sure to change the snap distance depending on your structure's relative size. I usually like to start with 0.5 feet. Then to start modeling with the pen tool, click once to generate a node at zero, zero and then start chaining the members with the pen tool. So we can see that it's using the snap distance to move up and down, and that every time you move in the direction of a cardinal axis, it's going to show you that dotted line. So if we go up eight feet here and come across, we can start generating our model. You can also draw from any node to any other node, as well as draw from a node to any point along the member. It's going to highlight the length of that member as you move along it. It'll also notice the midpoint here. You can snap to the midpoint of that member. Aside from the pen tool and the data sheets, make sure to take advantage of these operations that are under the edit tab. Some of the ones that are useful in this case are the repeat mirror shift nodes function. Also the rotate function, which is like a rotate copy and then curve member generation or spiral, spiral member generation. As you become more experienced with the software, you're going to find which combination of data sheet manipulation, pen tool, and operations uh, work best for your type of project. We can see here that we use the curve member function to generate this member here. Then we use the repeat function to generate these two frames here and here. And then we use the mirror function to mirror this entire bay across this way along this, this axis here. So with your model geometry generated, the next thing we want to do is change any of the sections that need to be changed. You can do this by clicking on any individual member and changing it. And this is done by going over to the member ID selection here, grabbing the section ID, selecting the section you want, hitting apply. You can see that the member changed there. The other way is to use the control and select functions or the control and drag functions to select multiple members at once. And then the same thing, changing this section here. So we want to change it to section two, hit apply. 
now all of those bracing members are different section. The last thing you want to do is add supports to your model. So what you can do is manipulate the geometry using control and select to select all of the nodes that you want to be supports. Right click, add supports. It's going to populate that for you and then selecting what support type you want. So with the correct sections identified for your members and supports applied, you want to go through the addition of your loads, which can consist of point loads, moments, distributed loads, area loads, and pressures. Area loads are applied to members and pressures are applied to plates. You can also automatically turn on the self weight of the structure as well as add the load combinations. So to add these loads, either click on the requisite button over here or click on the thing you want to apply to, such as a node, right click, either add point load or whatever is whatever load is necessary, and then filling in the fields here. So one thing we want to point out here is the load group. Load groups are actually arbitrary names that you can give your loads to keep track of them and group them together throughout the project. We're going to show how to link these load groups to specific load cases next. We're going to call this downward live load. We'll say apply and there's our load. Now that all the loads are applied, we can continue moving down the input parameters. Click on self weight and make sure to turn that on. So to give your different load groups meaning, we can back out of this, go to edit, assign load cases. We'll select our code. Now we can assign specific load cases to the arbitrary named load groups that we have. So for self weight, it would be dead. For downward live load, we can obviously see that's live load and same thing for our win load that I applied. When those are done, hit submit. So by default, the software is going to run the analysis in its current form with any present loads by adding them all linearly or with a 1.0 factor. So to add load combinations, go to the button. Here you can either put them in individually like any other input uh, by manually adjusting the factors, or you can copy them in from a separate spreadsheet if you have a, a list of um, load combinations there. Or you can use the design code import. To do this, make sure you're on the correct country with the correct design code. Display the load combinations you want to perform. We can see that the load cases are applied here or assigned here. And then toggle on or off any of the load cases you don't want. So for this example, we can toggle off all the earthquake loads. Make sure to try to apply all of your loads first before adding load combinations, as this feature will automatically apply the load factors to load, uh, loads that are already present in the software. And the last thing we just do need to do is hit import. Now we can see that the load combinations are present. So at this point, our geometry, our loading and everything is completed. If you wanted to add dynamic loads for seismic analysis, you could do that. But from here, it would just need to be coming up to the solve button and then selecting from one of these various analysis types. You can see it ran the analysis fairly quick. And this would be where the uh, analysis can be viewed. In here, you'd be able to interpret your results, look at single members, print analytical reports, view the summary of the project, and investigate the loading effects before taking your structure into the actual design part with this design button here. So in this video, we didn't go over the plate application or analysis, so make sure to look at the documentation articles on that to learn more if that is what interests you. Make sure to check out the resources in the description to learn more about how to use each of the specific functions that we talked about and highlighted in this video. Thanks for watching. We hope you found it very informative. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure to follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook. We hope to see you guys on the platform soon.